Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and uh, once again, I am joined with Jolene, the, uh, the Hello. wise and magnificent Jolene. <laughs> oh gosh, didn't expect some so hot, such high praise today. I know, right? I'm, I'm in a I'm in a mood <laughs> today of being nice. <laughs> I almost kicked the shit on my computer. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> that would have been the quickest recording ever. Because <laughs> I, I, I would, I wanted to go put my leg up, but I almost hit it by like an inch. Oh my god, again? Yeah. Please. Oh, oh the, that would have been the shortest recording. <laughs> anyway, uh, today uh, we are not going to be reading the uh, the law book. Uh, we decided, like, it, it's been in my little library thing for things to read for a video list for, like, a while. And Jolene has expressed an interest in the book. So, uh, today, we're gonna be reading a book called Waluigiism. Uh, Woo! Waluigi! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so, instead of falling in love with a hot doctor after being in a coma, we're gonna learn about the religion of Waluigi and his isms. <laughs> His many isms. Okay, yeah, and me saying ism made it sound like he has like the tism. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is just straight up called Waluigiism, and it's the holy book of Ba. <laughs> I am disappointed that it only has 739 reads. Uh, this book needs more attention. <laughs> sure thing. It's it's beautiful. Also, I, I don't know what, to, cause like when I now that when I edit my Wattpad stuff, when we pull up like the book and everything, mm -hmm. like the text and whatnot, I put little things on the side to mark to to hide like the ads and to kind of condense it. I have no mm -hmm. idea what the fuck I'm gonna add to the side of the Waluigi book. <laughs> All right, chapter one. I like how the chapter one has almost all the views that this book has collectively earned. <laughs> I mean, me. I guess. I, I feel like it deserves more. It does. It's beautiful. Who the fuck is calling me? <laughs> Go away! <laughs> I'm filming! <laughs> Alright. So, chap chapter one. <laughs> me should I start? Uh, we, we can flip for who goes first. Okay. Uh, do you want to be- I'm gonna flip the remote. Do you want to be the buttons? Or the back side? I'll be the buttons. Alright. Mm. It's buttons. Knew it! Yes! <laughs> I, never, I never hear anyone excited about reading first. They're always like, oh, I fucking lost. Well, I, 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 like, I did read ahead of this, so my bad. I was excited. Okay. Oh god, now I'm nervous. Why you got me like this? <laughs> just calm down. <laughs> just to <drawing. laughs> It's so beautiful. In the beginning, everything just came into existence. The world materialized from the formlessness and emptiness of the void. Time began to pass, animating all the world's substance into motion in, inter in intermenacy. And then there was light, allowing the separation of night from day. Each unit of matter was given weight so that it could unite and take form. From this matter came individual creatures, with, with each distinct experience and understanding of the world that they inhabited. These creatures chose to adopt goals to facilitate their survival in an indifferent universe. Finally, they formed tribes around manufactured identities to create unity and some semblance of meaning. And one day, it came to pass that a star fell from the sky into the mouth of an open volcano. The fallen star could not escape, and its body was pulled into the core of the planet. But in its final moments, it chose to give up, give up on its life force to the inhabitants of the planet. So each of the twelve tribes received blessings from the Fallen Star and gained inexplicable powers. The twelve tribes were Toad, Goomba, Koopa, Boo, Shy Guy, Yoshi, Piranha Plant, Kong, Monty Mole, Wiggler, Bomb, and Human. Naturally, the tribes wondered how the star could, how the star could give them powers, but were given no answers. And so, to give meaning to their lives, the tribes created stories from which they could derive values and societal structure. Through each story was formed from the tribe's individual circumstances. They give a glimpse of the greater truths of creation, and on every summer solstice thereafter, each tribe sent a sage to give an offering to the star as thanks for the blessings they have received. 
A great many years later, and none of them could remember when the tribe received their blessings, it again came time for offerings to be delivered. So, each tribe sent a sage to the top of the volcano as their representative, and as they placed their offerings, they gave blessings according to the tribe's custom. It came time for the human sage named Dario to place the final offering of the gold cap next to the other eleven. But rather than offering a prayer, he stated that the blessings of the other tribes were folly. He said that there could only be one true story, and perhaps their me meeting was a chance to discover it. So, it was eventually agreed that each tribe would relay their story of their creation, and would agree upon the correct version. And they came to the decision by consensus, for each sage was proud, and knew that other story would be, would dis, and uh, knew that no other story would dissuade them from their truth. So, Todella, the matriarch of the Toad tribe, began the story of Toadette and Toad. In the beginning, the great star in the sky broke off <laughs> broke off a piece of itself and set to work. The great star created a planet which was capable of supporting life. Specifically, innumerable cold and dank caves were created below the surface of the planet, and it was good. The great and the great star placed creatures in this world so that it could be experienced. But the creatures of the land acted according to their base instincts and could not conceive of higher, higher goals. Hence, the great star created an intelligent being called Todet, so that it, so that the world has been created, so the world that had been created could be understood and appreciated. But Todet was lonely, so the great star removed her mycelium and used it to form Toad. And the sight of Toad. <laughs> Wait, they're like retelling the Bible story. <laughs> Wait, is it, is it like Adam and Eve were created? Like Adam was there and then he got lonely so God just took his rib and made Eve? I don't know. I've not read the Bible. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I learned from I when I was a Christian. That, yeah. I didn't read that lore. Yeah. Bible lore? <laughs> I have no clue, but it is it is so entertaining. I wonder if it's like all of it. Like, do they have the story of like Noah's Ark? Who's Noah? Is it like Koopa's Ark? Yeah. Also, I love that at the beginning it was like this is when the the night and the day were separate. I'm like, oh yeah, just like oh, the, just, I know. Like, the God did in the beginning <laughs> of the like the earth. That is so funny. Okay. I'm sorry, I just can't get a bit, that's so funny. For an eternity, Toadette and Toad were happy under the ground. For them, not knowing what was above surface was paradise, and the Great Star was pleased and believed that this manner of existence was good. So it told them that if they ever left the caves, they would lose their immortality and suffer terrible consequences. Now, one day, a chain chop from the surface ventured into the cave and came upon Toadette and Toad. The chain chomp was growing increasingly agitated and not being able to see in the dark, and charged right into Toad, causing him to fall over. Because of this coincidental occurrence, Toad left his fragile viral pride. Ver viral pride. Do you see the word? I'm I, I don't know. I can't read. His fragile pride. <laughs> oh, yeah, his fragile pride had been injured. So he grasped a rock and began chasing after the chain chop, telling Toadette to do the same. They chased after the chain chop all the way to the surface, forgetting the apparent importance of the Great Star's guidance. But as they escaped into the sunlight, the Great Star came upon them. I'm sorry, I just can't get over. Like, they, he said grabbed a rock, and my first thought was like, oh god, is this, is this Cain and Abel? But I'm sure we'll get to that later. <laughs> I love this book already. You didn't hear that. <laughs> also, like, I, I, like, kind of read ahead a little bit of, like, they, he just, like, mm -hmm. stripped them of their immortality and they can never go back. Dude, that, this is straight up the story of Adam and Eve where they were kicked out of the garden and they lost their immorality, like, immortality and shit. Damn. <laughs> Dang, that sucks. At least we know. Okay, okay. What is your best guess on who's gonna be Cain and Abel? Oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> I'm. I. I, I, mean, I feel like it's gonna be. Monty I feel like Mole. Be Monty Mole. <laughs> like, I feel like Monty Mole will be Moses. Yo, you know what that might be cool. Monty Mole Moses. 
coops. My little coopers. I'm, I'm hope I'm hoping the Koopas. Well, no, I think it's the Koopas, but I'm hoping for Shy Guy. Yeah. I wanna see how much like Bible references they're gonna put in this shit that I'm gonna get. I think after you finish this paragraph, I'll okay. go ahead and do this next one. Mm-hmm. Give you a break. <laughs> But as they escaped into the sunlight, the great star came upon them to fulfill, fulfill its promise, removing their immortality and cursing them never to be able to return to their underground utopia, and ever since the Toad tribe roamed the surface of the earth. So, you see, said Toadal, we have been ruled by women ever since, since men were prone to anger and violence. Based. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that's the moral of that story. Yeah, the moral of the story was not oh, cool, you know. <laughs> Some of the sages were somewhat confused about how the toads that lived under the ground could communicate with the great star who lived in the sky. The Bible shit, the magic. <laughs> but this train of thought was interrupted by Cranky Kong inquiring how a tribe that believed all toads were created in the image of the great star so clearly believed that half of his population was lesser. Before Todel could respond, Elder Piranha butted in and stated that it would be viewed as a good thing that the codes had ventured up the ground. Perhaps the paradise that the toads professed to have lived in was a metaphor. Is this a reference to the allegory of a cave? I... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Elder Piranha posted that the Toe tribe had always lived on the surface. However, in the beginning they believed their world to be paradise because they were unaware of their own morality and did not understand the existence of danger. So, in metaphorically leaving the cave and being cursed by the Great Star, the Toad's circumstances hadn't been hadn't really changed. The difference is that the Toads had gained an awareness of the hazards they faced. Hence, in coming to the surface, the Toads gained the ability to shape their future. Just like the Toad tribe was later blessed with the intel intellect and industriousness by the fallen star. Not wanting Elder Parada to continue her insightful discussion, Pop Bomb -Bom began outlining his vision of anarchy. <laughs> oh, I love it. We love Pop Bomb. -Bom. <laughs> Yo, this is my favorite character, is Pop Bomb. -Bom. It's talking about anarchy. <laughs> Let's see what he's got to say. Yeah. He said that the Great Star had created a world with 11 tribes, and that each had constructed a utopia for itself. However, these great successes gave rise to all-consuming melancholy that threatened the very existence of society. So, to balance the tribe's immense power of creation, the Great Star created the first bomb, -bom, Ben. <laughs> Just Ben. Ben. We, we love Ben. Not like He's the first. Artist. Yeah. Ben he first. was number one! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> now let's remember that fucking Spongebob quote. <laughs> and at the oldest anarchy servant of the Great Star, he took it upon himself to destroy all the utopias that have ever been built. So he constructed mo many more babams, and they became as numerous as the number of grains of sand that they could f fit in a relative large bucket. Since the societies of the world took it upon themselves to escape the wrath that had been inflicted upon themselves, manufacturing floating cities to, that could maintain themselves in the sky. Coincidentally, Ben in fuck <laughs> Get them. innovated, innovated, and made bullet pills that could fly through the air indefinitely without needing fuel. And everything that, that each of the tribes had built was brought to ruin. But in an attempt to recreate the last em empire, the tribe recovered a sense of purpose. Without the possibility of destruction, creation had no meaning. So, so his lore is just like there was a babam, and he killed everything, and then he made more babams, and, and then bullets. he killed more things. Yeah, and it's like you know what? Y'all are gonna be sad if there's no one to destroy your thing. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I get it, but it also makes no sense. Yeah. Because eventually, I feel like they'd overcome their plague of melancholy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but. They'll live. Now, none of the other elders, much like Pop Babom, largely because Babom's had blown up their stuff a lot, 
And ever since the, lar the Great Star had blessed the Babas with the power to rewind time when they exploded, they were begrudging, uh, begrudgingly accepted into the Brotherhood of Man, and occasionally a giant monster from the Dino Realm would be warded off with the self-sacrificial bravery of the Babas. Oh my god! Just... Wait, wait, well, when, when was the... Are we gonna get lore about the Dino Realm? Maybe. I mean, I'd hope so. Like they're, they're talking about the Great Star created everything, you know. But what about what about this with this Dino? Why is this Dino here? Why has the Great Star allowed this? What is it like the like a big Yoshi, or is it like the like the oh shit? Have you ever played a uh, uh, Super Mario Galaxy? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> no like, I guess I have. I think in like the first level, there's a there's like a big Dino guy that you face. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's that. It's that guy <laughs> that they just beat the shit out of. <laughs> Could you imagine if it's a Yoshi? <laughs> You're just gonna hear all the Yoshi sounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Well, how the fuck does Waluigi play into this? It's just like oh. the tribes going like, "No, my story's better." <laughs> oh gosh. We'll we'll find out. Hopefully, hopefully. How many how many chapters is this? Oh, it's, it's it's eight chapters. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get, we'll get there. Maybe he's Jesus. <gasps> oh my... G I really hope you're right. <laughs> like, they're God, and then he made Waluigi. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know what? That makes sense. Because you know how people ship <laughs> Waluigi with Rosalina? And oh. Rosalina does the stars? Oh my god, maybe it's Rosalina's it. God! <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh! Alright, we're, maybe we're calling it. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, I, we, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Coincidentally, the tribes knew the worst of the the, of destruction that could wrath, whatever, by the <laughs> by the bombs. So they were treated as equals, regardless of their anarchy tendencies. And what is in this tale of mindless destruction? King Boo remarked that at least it was not as heteronormative as the previous tale. For the asexual boob tribe, uh, sorry, <laughs> boo, so I don't know, <laughs> was somewhat, uh, th th what the fuck does that say? <laughs> Pertubed? Perturbed. Perturbed by the other tribes. <sighs> Why such big words? Em emphasis. emphasis. <laughs> of gender and heterosexuality. To them, it was obvious that the quality of character was the only thing that truly mattered. And Mango Mold concerned concurred concurred let's talk about how good a name of mango mole is yeah i feel like the, like if all of them have the letter m that's perfect you can't you can't go wrong it's like the it's like when they're naming bees for like the bee movie all of them have to start with b oh my gosh that probably that probably wasn't too hard because it is a b i feel like b is a common letter that yeah. sounds pretty good I was gonna go botulism, but that is not. <laughs> that, no. <laughs> Agreeing that there was something to be said about the individual's endeavors only being given meaning by the fact that they all, that all achievement could could one day fall into ruin. This sentiment was stated in the same way that is that it is commonly understood that death is what gives meaning to life. I love that it's canon in this book that the boo that the, the boo try is is asexual. <laughs> we we love it. Wouldn't it be a gender? Because they're talking about heteronormative normativity. I don't know if they meant, like because you know they were like matriarchal and like so the women. I don't know. It could you know, just be an A's across the board like they're aromantic, asexual, and agendered. Isn't that just ace? I don't know. I'm I'm still learning. People sometimes identify as aroes, which both means aromantic and asexual. Mm hmm But... Is there one for triples? Like, if you're agender, asexual, and aromantic? That I do not know. I, That'd I know be really they cool. usually com I know they usually combine the, the the romantic and sexual together, but I don't know mm -hmm. if agender is also included on there. Because that's more of, like, gender identity than your mm -hmm. sexual preference, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they need to find another A. It's gotta be like A squared. Like for A for all suits of cards. Yeah. I feel like that'd be real a cool. A cubed. <laughs> Cu Wait, isn't isn't A cubed A to the exponential value of 
three. Yeah, it might be eight cubed. <laughs> I feel like, I don't think that's real, but it would be really funny if it was. <laughs> to just say, yeah. like, yeah, I'm aromantic, asexual, and agendered, so I'm, I'm A-cubed. A <laughs> Oh, that. I want to see a sticker like that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a silly thing to say, but that that's hella cool. Yeah. Why? Anyway. <laughs> why there is no such thing as death? Explain Wigtuz, the Wiggler. Zoo. Wig zoo. It's a play on. Oh. Yeah, it'd be Wig Zoo, like Sun Zoo. Oh, gotcha. The Wiggler, Machiarch. Only that they may pass on the, to another life. As it is written in the path. <laughs> Everything is temporary. The things that we understand as life and death are merely our souls traveling from one frontier of life to another. For there is no beginning or end to the world, only change. It is said that the flow that out underlines reality comes from the Yellow Emperor. Who the fuck's the Yellow Emperor? <laughs> oh, a wiggler with infinite length who, who spans in traverses all of reality. So, like, th their timeline, like, <laughs> is this a wiggler? <laughs> I, I'm gonna be honest with you, it took me a really long time, well, it took me a quite a bit to remember what a, a, rig a wiggler was. And also, what about the penguins? Aren't there penguins? Yeah, there's penguins. But there's no penguins here. I don't know. Maybe there's no penguins. They were... tribes. Oh my gosh, that's kind of messed Even up. Even though they were in the Mario movie, like, they had their own little kingdom and everything. <laughs> Oh my god! I cannot believe the penguins are not counted as a tribe. That's it's okay. Maybe maybe the penguins are from a different universe, like the dinos. Oh my god, you're right. They just come in and then they beat the shit out of them with bombs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't want to say as they should, but <laughs> how many people Actually, go into like the like Mario sixty four and <laughs> take the baby penguin and chuck it off the world? No! Oh my gosh! You know what? I love baby bombs. I take it back. I do love bombs. Yeah. Bombs? Bombs? For there is no beginning- oh, I read that shit. And the- and the planets that are in discard tales segments, which they have been left behind to allow us to survive. So we must live our lives as though we were the Yellow Emperor and known- and know that it is only our awareness that truly exists. Hence, it is no in vain to concern ourselves with the worldly possessions, for the only thing that truly matters is to know oneself. That's very poetic. I kinda like that. I don't wanna go under the wiggler, uh, <laughs> fucking religion. <laughs> the, the wiggler. Yeah. Let me know when you want me to take over. No, I'll probably- how much more is this? Uh, I'm almost- this is- uh, this is almost done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course, ever since the Wiggers have been blessed with reducing memory- Uh, yep, yep, this is reduced memory, they could do just that. One might think that the loss of mental factu- Facility- Fac Yeah, facility? Faculty. Faculty ought to be a curse rather than a blessing. But to Wigglers who were innately preoccupied with the feelings of anger when- when their flow was interrupted, it was a gift that allowed them to- to live fuller lives. So, this apparent weakness allowed them- Allow them to prosper, relying on their instincts to live full and happy lives. Thinking about all the mindful stuff was was a bit rich and would not actually address the concerns of ordinary people. Mungo Mole outlined an alternative version, vision. Once a great mountain spirit had enslaved all the moles in the world, the spirit wished to build a mountain that would reach the heavens so it would become equal to the great star. The spirit bound the moles by a heavy curse that would injure the ones they cared about most if they tried to escape. One of these moles was named a pent, and a pent bore I, and I bore Katum. And once Katum had become fully grown, he had an indigenous idea. So he gathered all the moles together in a meeting place and wrote a mole manifesto. Scroll down. <laughs> And the moles unified in the hope of receiving better working conditions for their cruel master. This feels like the Amazon. <laughs> Karl Marx. Karl Marx. <laughs> this feels like the Amazon like worker. Oh my gosh! Ah, uh, the Communist Manifesto. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, hey, we just want better working conditions if that's necessary, and they probably were rejected. 
<laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, this fear frustrated the spirit, who believed that in providing the moles with a home, he was acting in their in their best interests. This perspective was obviously ignorant at the fact that they, if they left their loved ones, would be harmed. Realizing this error, the spirit mountain hardened its heart and sought to undo the creation of collective bargaining. So the cunning spirit offered the moles health and dental. <laughs> they agree not to unionize. <laughs> Oh, this is an- oh my gosh, I, I remember- it's like the coal mine thing. Do you know the- oh, I don't remember really? what state it was in. Yeah, 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 there was a whole thing with these coal miners back in like the early 19... some- the early 19... well, not early, it's like early to mid. But, um, yeah, they were provided them housing and everything for they could be closer to work, and they, for they could like pretty much work their life away. And they could only but they could only use their money in like these work like the the stores they made and it was really terrible and so oh they like they try to unionize and they're like oh no we'll do this this is that and if you unionize and then they um I'll try to find it but yeah that sounds really interesting that this is actually yeah, based no. off of that yeah my first thought was the fucking Amazon thing with the <laughs> Jeff Bezos mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff Bezos yeah. As soon as they said harsh working conditions and unionizing, I'm like, yep, this is Amazon. <laughs> but where did I leave off? Oh yeah, if they agree not to unionize. And the moles accepted because their loved ones were injured from the hard labor they endured. But over time, the quality of the health care the moles received gradually decreased become because health care was expensive and the spirit had no inflow of income. <laughs> This is just America. <laughs> oh god. This is just like oh, you're right. in the United States. Shitty healthcare, but very expensive. Oh, I love my expensive shitty healthcare. Yay. As it became clear that it was foolish for the moles to have given up their collective bargaining power, so again, Katim sought to unionize, but he could not speak for the mountain spirit had hexed the moles so they could could not speak about unionization. This damaged moral along the moles and removed all of their motivation to complete their work. For without hope, they had nothing to live for. So Kadam went to the spirit to state that there was no way for the mountain to touch the skies because not enough stones existed on the planet to build a mountain that high. And the spirit replied that there was nothing to live for if not the endeavor of leaving one's mark in the world. After hearing his foolishness, Kadam spoke. Despite the hardship they had endured, the mole tribe maintained itself by ap appreciating the- What the fuck does that say? Niceties. Niceties in its life. For the first time, the spirit understood the wisdom of the people it had enslaved. So the spirit decided to leave a mountain and explore the world to find itself. Letting the moles go at, in, as a- fuck, Letting the moles go as a gesture of goodwill. And as the spirit left, the tunnels in the mountains became cold and the crops that grew on the mountainside withered, for they had been supported by the spirit's magic. And the mole tribe didn't know whether their freedom was a blessing or a curse. I feel like that is a really good one. I feel like of all of them, that's my favorite. Because yeah. it's it's not a happy ending, and it's not, like, neither like a, like a terrible one, but it's still, you know. Yeah. Honestly, it was a good read. It is, it is. I just like how they all went to pray for the, the thing, and then the human, like, the, the human sage was like, Hey, I think mine's better, so we should all, like, share stories about, like, what we think about the Great Star, and, mm -hmm. and they're just like, well, my virgin's like this. I mean, at least they didn't battle to the death, you know? Yeah. Really, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah, they could have been killing each other over their religion. I'm, I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they're just sitting around like a campfire on a on a volcano, <laughs> and just like. I forgot their they're on a volcano. Yeah, they went to offer shit, and now they're just like talking. <laughs> I wonder when it's gonna like. I'm guessing like maybe the final chapter is gonna be like present day, or where we have like Mario, Princess Peach, and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't know I'm how far maybe. ahead this Bible goes. God, I feel like we, we're barely making it. Yeah, we probably can like do this in, in your in your in your experience. Yeah. How how far are we into the Bible? 
it's I probably feel like we're still at the beginning because it, it, they're okay. sharing stories of like the beginning uh -huh. of their tribe. So I don't. I did read the full Bible. I just hear stories of like the the good shit. But this was the good shit. <laughs> yeah, like like, <laughs> like the Adam and Eve stuff, and then like Noah's Ark, and then I think Noah and the in the whale. That's a good one. And Noah then, and the whale. Like I, think, I feel like. I think the story goes that Noah didn't want to obey God, and then God sent a whale to eat him up, and then send him to the place he didn't want to go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, what is your favorite- what's your favorite story from the Bible? Oh, I'm trying to think. I haven't read that shit in years. <laughs> I've only- I've only seen, like, little snippets. I love Moses. Is it, is it because I love the Prince of Egypt? Yes. I've never seen that movie. <gasps> I know. I'm, so I'm sorry. appalled. Maybe, maybe when you come over, we'll go. I'm watch kidnapping it. you. I'm okay. kidnapping you before we could watch it. All right. Well, I'm gonna I, kidnap I you and kidnap a movie. Sunday. Hey, I'll be in town Sunday. We could, we could have a little Prince of Egypt moment. Oh my gosh. All right. It, it's a day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You go ahead, man. In response to this tale of ambiguous moral worth, Balo Yoshi stuck his tongue out for two seconds to eat a peach that was present in a bush at the top of the volcano. And after Balo ate the peach, he asked why the two different tribes had told the same story, for it seemed like both the wigglers and the Monty Moles endeavored to live a reality, rather than seek out some higher mode of existence. And all other sages rolled their eyes, for the Yoshi tribe has been known to be daft and short daft and of short attention span. In fact, it was often joked that Yoshi, whose rider had been injured, would be unable to do anything other than run in a straight line, even if there were obstacles in the way. Well, you obviously were not listening, said Mango. Our story had more of a focus on material freedom rather than strange metaphysical ideas. It is, it is the Wiggler tribe who are truly free, shot back Wigzu. <laughs> Just... I'm sorry. No, you were good. <laughs> uh, just for your ancestors, we're, suppo we're supposedly slaves to the mountain spirit. You are slaves to pursuit. You are slaves to ah. You are slaves to the false pursuit of knowledge. Rigzu was referring to the vast underground library that had been built by the moles over generations. For the falling star had given them a power of sight, where there was no light. And the mole tribe soon realized the value of curling up in a burrow with a good book such as. Family brawl, Wigzu quieted down, for he remembered that the other tribes rely on the vast knowledge that had been accumulated by the moles. To break the silence, the Shy Guy Sage, who refused to impart their name on account for being shy, <laughs> began their story. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I, do you, do you, <laughs> he's so cute. I love Shy Guy. He's just a little boy. Just a, just a little guy. Yeah. A long time ago, the Shy Guys did not wear any clothes, but instead competed to see who could have the greatest physical appearance. It should be noted that in the Shy Guy dialect, the term guy is understood as being gender neutral, and the vanity of the Shy Guys was spread with equal measures across the spectrum of identity. So the Shy Guys toiled aimlessly across the- <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't- <laughs> What? No, the, the Shy Guys toiled aimlessly across the disciplines of- Crossfit, diet, accessorizing, and glowing up. <laughs> One day, a shy guy called Hua was born. Oh my god, is this Wa Luigi? Wa and <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get over the name. And Hua's beauty was so immense that all the other shy guys felt inferior. Oh my, oh my god! god. <laughs> and they felt inferior and suicidal. And seeing the stripe of his brethren and kin, Hua chose to wear a mask, and for the first time, the Shy Guys felt free from the burden of having to live up to an idealized nature of beauty. So out of solidarity, they too donned masks and full-body costumes. Now, after generations of hiding themselves, the Shy Guys collectively developed an anxiety disorder. They might somehow disappoint their peers if they cast away their clothes. Damn. So... <laughs> yeah. So wait, wait, wait. Wow. The, the, the story of the Shy Guys is that they were like... They were like they never were, they were and they were like both yeah, they were naked. motherfuckers and then they were one they were dude, jacked they were beautiful yeah and then this one dude comes along that's like absolutely wow. gorgeous and then like they all get like 
like feelings of depression and the <laughs> to the like, that the guy would like, wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, why don't we do that? <laughs> uh, solidarity. Solidarity guy. Now they're all modest shy guys. <laughs> now they have anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> So Todell asked why the Shy Guys chose to remember such an unfortunate story. The Nameless Sage replied that the Shy Guy thought it was, thought that their current predicament was was equal to what they had started with. They felt it necessary to ruminate over this apparent and equivalent exchange to see some way forward for themselves, and that the sacrifice of Hua was great enough to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I love like, your reading voice going from like. And that was the sacrifice of wham. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is so hard for me to do that. <laughs> but it's so great. Yeah. It's my favorite. Okay. It was great enough to be remembered, despite the current difficulty that was being faced. And <clears throat> I'm dying. I'm sorry. And the, fall <laughs> and the falling star had blessed the shy guys with immense physical strength, inversely proportional to their weight at sea level. The weight at sea level? I guess. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's, it's fancy Bible shit, man. Do they change weight at like, at like, uh, like a thousand feet? Uh, do, do people change weight at a thousand feet? <laughs> Is weight determined by elevation? I have no idea, to be honest. I hope not. <laughs> I don't think so. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. And then. Giuseppe the Goomba began speaking before the other sages were fully done contemplating their heroic deed of Wa, and Giuseppe spoke. There were particles called shiitake that would contain life force of the world. Shiitake flows through all the group Goombas, giving them perfect balance when standing on each of on each other's heads. And in a realm distant from the center of Goomba power, a slave Goomba bore a child named Enoki, and it was certain the child had been created by the life force on account of his high shiitake count because it would not make sense for a supernatural event not to have a scientific explanation. And so, Inoki was abducted by an organization of military monks to be put through harsh warrior training because Goomba society generally desires that its infants to be traumatized. Oh, you gotta get that shit early, Mike. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What's more, he could never see his mother again because she was a, still a slave and Inoki became, became competent in use of their life force. Now Inoki was a viral young lad with a, with a certain age of a certain age and grew infatuated with Princess Porcini Arancini. Porcini Arancini? Porcini. I, I full stop. What is, what is that? I feel like what is that? Por por Porcini? Porcini R I Chini. Is this like a dish or is this like a specific Why should be like a mushroom? Oh dish? my god, yeah, it's, it's a it is a mushroom dish. <laughs> it's like a it's like a mushroom ball. It's like a, I think it's like a fried mushroom ball. When they said like shiitake, I was like, wait, I was thinking about like the shiitake mushrooms when they yeah. said that. I can't believe this princess I mean, is named after a mushroom dish. So is Enoki. Oh my god. Enoki's an also mushroom. Also a mushroom. And so is Porcini Arancini. And then suppose- oh wait. And he knew the famous bomb bomb myths, and that the exact numbers of bomb bombs had been supposedly created by- that had been supposedly created by Ben, so he seduced the princess by joking about his hatred of the of the simile used by bomb moms, and it was super efficient. But unfortunately, love and Goomba affection were forbidden by the evil warrior monks. So in an outburst of anger, Inuki went and murdered a whole bunch of bomb moms by jumping on them, with high-ranking court officials named Polyprotein, but a high-ranking official court. Oh my God. Named Polyprotein saw Inuki's plight and told them the story of Portobello the Dumb. For Portobello was a. <laughs> I'm sorry. Portobello, Portobello. mushrooms? I threw all mushroom beam. It, I, it's, a, it, it's great. It's perfect. It's on theme. Perfect. It's a previous advisor who had wished to continue many dumb traditions, like failing to invest in education and housing. 
So, Portobello's successor, who was trained to continue the art of neglectful societal management, took it upon himself to kill Portobello in his sleep. Nice. Polypro Polypro <laughs> Polyprotein further advised Anoki had and I advised Anoki had the ability to alter the traditions of his society if he became a killer. Inoki was convinced by this unbiased story of murder from a mushroom he had every reason to suspect was in fact the murderer. Therefore, Inoki decided to kill the king and save the traumatized youth from their inevitable misery as warrior monks by calling them. Oh? Oh, wait. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought, like, Inoki decided to kill more children. In a shocking twist, the princess was not okay with all this wanton murder and died of sadness. Damn, the sinister polyprotein. The death certificate. <laughs> Why? Calls it out. Sadness. <laughs> oh, Mina, that's powered by sadness. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding. Do you know how high she'd go with that little propeller hat? Have you seen that video? No, I got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my bad. Send it to me later. I can see it. <laughs> Good shit powered by and, the, <laughs> and the sinister polyprotein tricked Inoki by telling him he had killed his beloved wife. And as a result, as a result of this deception, Inoki agreed to serve polyprotein. Damn, these guys are stupid as shit. <laughs> At this point, the story had been running on for a long time and didn't seem likely to be going anywhere. So King Boo started laughing creepily in an attempt to change the subject. Seeing what was happening, Giuseppe cautioned the other sages to wait, for his story would get better. Eventually, Inoki would slay Polyprotein to save his son from death, and the story would rhyme like poetry, for Polyprotein had also ended his master. And, th and then a new generation of Goombas would continue to fight over the Shiitake, while embodying unmar unmarketable progressive values that would be fun for the whole family. At a point in the story when it seemed like the young heroes were on the cusp of winning, Somehow, polyprotein would return. This is the best part, said Giuseppe, because it continues the legacy of the earlier parts of the story. I'm sorry, replied King Boo, but I was under the impression that Inoki and his thematic descendants were the protagonists. It makes no sense for polyprotein, whose death was an inherent part of the story structure, to come back. To all the other sages, this is a turn event that seemed to, to like a cop out because Goomba storytellers were afraid of taking risks and letting characters extort dar explore dark themes. This harsh blowback gave Giuseppe pause, for it was almost though King Boo was deeply and subconsciously angered by something he had unknowingly done. Giuseppe cowered in fear, for though the fallen star had blessed Goombas with the abilities to reform themselves after they were stomped on, the process was painful and took a long time. Man, that's how they keep coming back. Lore! I think you might have to prepare for this one, next one. Yeah, I'll go ahead, let's see. <laughs> now, Kamek, the Koopa, saw the opportunity to tell his tale and muttered in to regale the beginning of everything. At the start of it all, a guy named Bleh said I- <laughs> Whoa, 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 we're not, we can't do that. I don't we gotta how to fucking gotta, pronounce that! <laughs> we gotta, we gotta find out! You can't even copy and paste on Wattpad, so I don't know how to... We'll find out, we'll find yeah, out, we'll find a way. I have no idea. <laughs> why, could but you ca why can't you copy and paste on Wattpad? Uh, copyright protection. Oh, that's silly. Yeah. I hold on, I might have an idea. Oh, shit. Hold on. Wait. The fucking dude's name is Shakira Miyamoto. Do you not know who that is? No, I'm sorry, did you say Shakira? <laughs> Shakira Miyamoto? That's the guy that runs Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you look at any Mario game and look at the credits, he's always listed because he's like the head. Shakira Miyamoto, I cannot believe that. I guess I'll just say Miyamoto because I fumble the first bit sometimes. Okay. At the start of it all, a guy named Miyamoto set out to construct the world. So he built many blocks and areas in a fixed, pixelated style. And he constructed narrow-minded Koopas to walk on the platforms because it pleased him to do so. But Miyamoto then wondered if the world he had created was meaningful. And as its inhabitants had no willpower. So Miyamoto gave some of the Koopas red shells and the ability to turn backwards and forwards. 
Before this time, the Koopas lived in constant fear of walking off ledges. The <laughs> I can't say this. They were merely, merely conscious as a, in a pre-animated form and could only choose to live or die. But this freedom was not enough for Miyamoto, so he gave some of the Koopas clouds and named them Jum Jumgem. But as Miyamoto was was lifting the Koopas into their clouds, he accidentally left a, the small monkey Juman Joman in one of the clouds. Though he was too proud to admit it, Miyamoto had made a mistake. Juman Juman had in, introduced randomness to the the closed system which Koopas inhabited. And this randomness spread in indeterminate fuck what the fuck <laughs> Indeterminacy. Indeterminacy. So Miyamoto couldn't no longer predict what Koopas would do next. And this like unlikely event affected gave rise to the phenomenon known as free will. Because of the decision <gasps> Free I, Will I cannot believe he he turned on the free will switch. Oh uh. <laughs> uh, do you remember that that trend where it was like the I, I think I think it's from like Super Mario Bros, like the the soundtrack by like one of the OSTs. It was like, doo 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 ha ha, like, the, like, any time that beat hits, the Koopas would, like, stop what they're doing and dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of that. That's their only bit of, like, what, that's the only thing that they don't get of free will, is that they have to stop. <laughs> that's what I'm imagining, at least. Oh, I love that. Well, I, I like that I have free will, but, you know, they, they're controlled by the beat of the music. Yeah. The little tunes. Yeah. Because the decisions made by the Koopas were out of Miyamoto's control, every day the Koopas acted in ways that Miyamoto thought were possibly unlikely. Rather than use his omni omnipotence. omnipotence to revert the universe to his previous state, Miyamoto left the Koopas alone to see how this experiment would play out. Moreover, Miyamoto sought to help the Koopas by telling them to live by the principles he had created for them, and that walking would make them content. Now, all the Koopas chose to believe Miyamoto, who they thought had gifted them freedom in walking back and forth on platforms for the eternity of their lives. And Miyamoto said to their offspring, Look at the free will you now have, and revert me. And the youth began to question whether they had a duty to follow their creator, for they could not recall a time they had lacked free will. So, Miyamoto stated that they... that stated that had they been in the past, they would not have been bust. Still, the youth remained petulant and lacked respect. As a fine detribution for, Miyamoto restricted the free the free motion of the youths. Man, just stripped them of their fucking free will. <laughs> oh, they got free will and then they didn't get ripped. Yeah, they're like, they should have like, said no take back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Their fault, their fault. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Victim I'm a Miyamoto sympathizer. Yeah, just victim blame the Koopas. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was fucked up. <laughs> and it was though no free will had ever existed, but Miyamoto wondered whether the youths were right to ignore his warning. For to them, it had seemed as though the rules had were either a bib bib arbitrary arbitrary chosen by an omnipotent being or were beneficial to them for purely physical reasons. In either case, Miyamoto would be irrelevant to them. Miyamoto was not con convinced that the youths were wrong, so he returned their free will, but Miyamoto was worried that perhaps without following the absolute rules he had set out for the Koopas, they would turn against each other. For it is not an absolute moral truth that every Koopa is valuable. Then surely society would devolve into chaos. But this fear was unfounded, for the Koopas were an intelligent people who recognized that their experience was not absolute truths. But the Koopas prospered and became wealthy by banning their parasitical ethos and engaging in trade with the other tribes. Now, this stood in dark contrast to the human tribe, who believed that their div div fuck. 
<laughs> divinity. Divinity had chosen by the great stars were absolute in hatred and hated outsiders for not sharing their values. And hmm. the, that what does this sound like? Christianity. <laughs> no, we didn't. We're not naming names here. What? Are we? It could be someone else, right? Yeah, yeah. It could be else. grass. <laughs> you know? It could be the marijuana. The we're gonna get, I'm so sorry. We're gonna get your video blocked. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> and this belief from. Remained despite the human tribe's tale, placing great emphasis on how they were the once great strangers in the foreign lands. Are they from the dimension that the dinos came from? Oh my god. They could be colonizers. You know what? I think they are! <gasps> oh my god, you're right! Yeah, like, they, they, like the other one, like the other... Like, you know, it, it would make sense. Yeah. The only humans are like Mario... There's only like six! Yeah. Seven! Yeah, like, the, the other ten tribes are doing their own thing, and then, like, the humans came through, like, the dino realm, and they were like, Sup, I'm here to colonize your shit! <laughs> Give me your resources! Yeah. My planet's dying. Yeah. <laughs> In making this point, Kamek was trying to dispute Arrow's initial re representation of some absolute truth. For surely a a people's story existed only in relation to their circumstances, and such a story would never remain the same indefinitely, for nothing in this world lasts forever. None knew this lesson better than the Koopa tribe, who relied on who relied on the shells they were given at birth to protect them from the entirety of the uh, for the entirety of their years. Now, Iraro was enraged at this point. For he believed that the Grey Star had created the human tribes to dominate the Earth. Oh my god! It is colonization! <laughs> it is humanity. Yeah. This is who we are. Upon discovering that Inero held this belief, a reasonable person might question why he would even engage in discussion with the other tribes. It is a truth universally acknowledged that all beings all living beings rely on social engagement of others to validate their existence. For how can an individual define their own nature, if not by understanding themselves through the comparison to others? And it seemed as though the same was true for societies, in that they define themselves as existing in relation to their predecessors or geopolitical adversity. And when Enero asks himself the question of who he was, the silence of the universe was deafening. So, Inero sought to establish his identity based on achievement, and he had directed the human tribe to build a great many s structures so that his glory would be known. But in time, he realized that he had only built what he had built would inevitably crumble and become distress. And because his anger to, at himself due to his own failure to live up to his expectations, he constructed a world in his mind where, where his fragile psyche would be, was beyond injured. Woo! <laughs> a lot of words. Yeah, his fragile psyche. Is my, your psyche? My, my your psyche, psyche is very fragile right now. <laughs> <laughs> In his internal universe, the human tribe had chosen in, was chosen and divine, and all the wrongs in the world were caused by others. The human legend did not inherit led itself to this matter of evil. It was co-opted by those who felt that the only way to validate themselves was to restrict the lives of others. Now, when the Fallen Star blessed the Koopa tribe with immunity from motion injury when they were sliding on their shell, this gave the Koopa tribe the ability to act as fierce warriors to protect what they dear, what was dear to them. And so, Arrow had not dared to encroach upon the Koopa's domain. Woo! We're wow. learning the lore! Lore! So, what'd you think? <laughs> I mean, it's- I'm, I'm waiting for the Waluigi. Yeah. I was really excited with wah, but you know. Yeah. <sighs> it, it is gonna be like the beginning of the Bible, where like, like it's like the. When, okay, I'm gonna read the Bible. I'm gonna be like, when does Jesus come in? <laughs> well, he comes in in the New Testament. I know he's referenced. I gotta read all the all the Old Testament. 
Yeah, Before I, I get to the Jesus part? Yeah, I feel like we're in we're in the Old Testament, definitely. I know Jesus is referenced in the Old Testament somewhere, like a little bit, like sprinkled in as a little treat, but like I feel like if I need a bigger treat than that. If my prediction is correct, when we get to the New Testament is when Waluigi is Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, does... who do you who do you think Wait, okay. Right. Waluigi Jesus, right? Who who are the Romans? Oh my god, you're right. The Romans. You think it'd be Do you think it'll humans? be Mario? Mario and Luigi? Oh my god, that'd be really funny. Well, that'd be Dude, terrible. Wait, Not Luigi, maybe wait, Mario, but... Wait, didn't Jesus have the, like, 12 disciples and one to betray him? I feel like it'd be <gasps> really funny. Judas! <laughs> <laughs> Judas, yeah. Oh my god, oh my god wait. What if Wario is, the, is Judas? No, not War- You know what, that would make sense. Yeah. I feel it. If it if, wait, if this actually follows the Jesus story to like a oh my god, that means Waluigi's gonna get crucified. <laughs> no, the crucifixion. <laughs> We're gonna have to go through the crucifixion of Waluigi. <laughs> oh wait. Okay, you know how I said Rosa, like Rosalita, <laughs> like with God. But yeah. what if no? Woo. Rosalina Mary Magdalene? Maybe. I think, like, God's supposed- to, in this story, is supposed to be the fallen star. It's- it, it, that's supposed to be the god. Cause I know some religions are like that, where it's like, one god and it's just different stories are interpreted differently. And that's mm -hmm. how we have religions like Christianity, Jewism, uh, the, like the Muslims and Hindu and all that stuff, so... This might actually be following, <laughs> like... Uh, the Muslim religion is called Islam. Islam, that's it. I couldn't remember. I, I know they're called Muslims. I couldn't remember the actual religion's name, but it might actually mm -hmm. follow that because all the tribes have different stories from like they're all same God, but they all interpret it differently. So honestly, this writer is actually really good. <laughs> I know they're good. This is fucking awesome. My only critique is I wish they had quotation marks. Yeah, when yeah, when the that, that's people it. talk, yeah. That's or it, like, but anything else off. everything else is perfect. Yeah. Or if they um like when they talk we they do section it off in the paragraph, that way it's a little bit easier mm -hmm. to read. But yeah, quotation marks would would have helped a little bit that way we know what people are talking. <laughs> but uh, if you guys would like to read the the book of wine, uh, I'll have a link down below in the description. Hopefully we'll read it again. I thought it was Waluigi in them. Waluigi. Well, in the description, it's called the Holy Book of Wah, so... Oh, wait. Holy Book of Wah. Do you think it could be a Holy Book of Wah the person, or is it like Wah and then like a Waluigi? I think it's a Waluigi reference. I think it's a coincidence that like they named that, that kid Wah. <laughs> but, uh... I mean, the Bible's kind of like that, like... Like the official title is the Bible, but some people call it the the whole like the the holy, the holy book. Yeah, the holy book or like the word of God. Like it has different names. So this could be like that too, where it's called the holy book of Wah. <laughs> too many epithets. Yeah. I, I'm. This is my new religion. I'm gonna put that on my resume for now on. Your resume. <laughs> <laughs> If they ever ask my religion, Waluigiism, and they're like, what the fuck is that? And I'll be like, girl. <laughs> let me, fuck. let me, would you like to hear about our lord and savior, Waluigi? Yeah. <laughs> they start knocking on people's doors. Oh my god, I can, it's like the One Piece thing where people try to get people to watch One Piece, but instead we knock on people's door to get them to Stop! Do <laughs> Stop! Stop! Is that what you've done? Is this your religion? Is this... So many references I've seen of that on TikTok and like, he's like, I'm here to talk to you about uh, One Piece and I'm like, no, 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 sorry, but I'm not sure, like I told you a year ago, and they're like, honey, I was in your position about a year ago as well. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'll, do you want anything in the description? <laughs> nope. All right. We're well, good. Well, for Jolene, I will have nothing in the description for them. <laughs> I don't exist. Yeah. Never existed. You're Did you say yet? <laughs> oh, I know I said yes. You're just a figment of my imagination. Oh, imaginary friends do last forever. Yeah. I go to like yeah. edit back this video and I'm like, huh, I'm just talking to myself. That's weird. Or like I'm putting out a voice for when quote unquote you were you were talking. <laughs> <That's really laughs> what well, anyway? 
my name is Phoenix. That was Jolene. I guess we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.